I say. I've got three 8-bit computers to play with. The legendary BBC Micro, the heavyweight BBC Master 128 and the lightweight Acorn Electron. They were all available around the same time in the mid-1980s and each one has a story to tell. The BBC Micro is iconic in the UK. It transformed Acorn's future when they won the contract to supply a machine to support the UK's computer literacy programme. If you were at school in the 80s, you probably saw one or used one. The BBC came as a 16K Model A or a 32K Model B. The Model A was a bit cheaper but pretty useless as you couldn't use any of the decent graphics modes. So, unless you were happy to play games using chunky Teletext graphics, you wanted a Model B like this one. The BBC was solidly built with a good keyboard and plenty of expansion options that made it a great choice for education, research and engineering. You can even see legendary Formula One designer Ross Braun using one at the start of BBC's recent documentary about the Braun F1 team. But it did have a place as an excellent home computer if you had the space and the cash, and it spawned some great games and some brilliant conversions too. The other two computers embodied the two personalities of the original BBC Micro. The master is the serious side, bigger and with a numeric keypad, built-in spreadsheet and word processing software, a disk interface and sideways RAM, the master was very grown up. <coughs> the Electron was the playful side, a cut down, smaller, cheaper machine to compete with the top selling ZX Spectrum. It had less intimidating air to it and just the bits you needed to play games from tapes. But the Electron had its problems. Usually smaller things are faster, but the Electron is definitely not. Its memory access is much slower than the BBC Micro. To be accurate, RAM access is much slower to accommodate a cheaper, more compact data bus. It also doesn't have Teletext graphics. In the days of analog TV, Teletext was an ingenious way of sending information to domestic TV sets. Because each page was only 1K of data, no matter how simple or complex, a load of pages could be sent in sequence and, Eventually, the page you selected would be picked up and shown, usually news, sport or weather, in colour text and choddy graphics. The BBC Micro had an optional add-on box that could receive Teletext data and a built-in Teletext graphics mode. The fact that it was only a 1K screen left more room for code and data if you were happy with 40 column text and rudimentary graphics. That worked well with things like educational software. Now one of the selling points of the Electron was that it was a bit like the BBC Micro your kids used at school, and to a large extent that was true, but not when it came to Teletext mode. However, it did still have the excellent BBC version of the basic programming language. The BBC Master is a big unit, similar in size and weight to next generation 16-bit machines. Compared to the standard BBC Micro, it has a slightly better processor running a little bit faster with a few more instructions and using less power. My one has a secret, although it's not that secret if you've seen one of my earlier videos. This master has a Pi coprocessor inside. Now this is a modern piece of kit with a relatively new ARM processor. The A in ARM stands for Acorn and Acorn developed the original ARM design using BBC Micros and the Tube coprocessor interface, one of the unique expansion features of the BBC and the master but only the master had the internal connectors. This modern CoPro can emulate a whole range of systems including the 6502 Z80 and original ARM from back in the day, as well as a super fast modern ARM. Even back in the late 1980s, the master could include a PC style 80186 coprocessor with 512K of RAM and run PC software of the time for a price. But the master wasn't all work and no play. Because of the sideways RAM, there were enhanced versions of games such as Elite and Exile, which had bigger or better graphics, and even sampled sound effects. You see, one of the biggest problems with the BBC B was its memory. You got 32K of RAM, and the other 32K of addressable memory contains an operating system and basic interpreter that made other computers of the era look like toys. And that was great for computer scientists, but for games or any graphically intensive activity, the 32K RAM was a bit of an issue. All the good display modes used 20K. That did allow you to colour each pixel individually and gave you some fairly high resolution modes for the time, but only left 12K for programs and data. So some developers would hide and steal parts of the display for their own use. 
The BBC Master had more flexible memory management, allowing you to have 20k of screen shadow memory, effectively outside the normal 32k of user RAM, and you could page in banks of 16k sideways RAM. You could also add a sideways RAM and ROM card to your standard BBC if you wanted to, as there were plenty of companies who made them. Acorn did some good work with storage outside the machines too. Whereas most home computer users in early 1980s Britain had tape cassettes as their storage media, the BBC computers commonly had disk drives added. While still quite primitive by modern standards, the literally floppy 5.25 inch disks gave you fast random access that was a huge step up from cassette tape. The Electron is the exception here. You could get a 3.5 inch disk expansion, but generally anyone buying an Electron was looking to invest less cash and would settle for tape loading. The Electron didn't come with the same range of expansion options as the bigger BBC machines. You just got a circuit board edge connector. If you wanted to expand your Electron, the factory option was the plus one, which gave you a parallel port for printers and the like, an analog port that could be used for joysticks, light pens or other input devices, and two cartridge slots. Acorn had plans to publish more games titles on cartridge, and today you can get a cartridge with loads of games and utility programs to choose from. On my BBC machines, I've got an SD card equivalent connected to the user ports, a more modern implementation of the same idea. When you look inside the machines, there are some differences. The BBC B is the older design, so there are more small discrete logic chips. The master has a lot of these consolidated into gate arrays, which partly makes up for all the extra goodies included in the case of the master. And of course, my one has the Pi coprocessor sitting on a bright green shiny new circuit board, making the rest of it look a bit old and grubby. I think they call it patina in the antiques trade. The Electron comes in a much smaller box, and that's achieved mainly by the infamous Ferranti Custom ULA that consolidated the memory management, video and audio functions. It reduced the chip count dramatically, but reportedly there were manufacturing problems, although to be fair, the ULA did push the limits of the time. Also, the RAM management was slow because it used a 4-bit bus, so needed two cycles per byte operation. Back on the outside, the Electron's keyboard has a feature similar to the ZX Spectrum it aimed to compete with. You get some common basic keywords accessible from one key press with the Funk key. Unlike the Spectrum, this is an optional shortcut, but it does serve as a kind of basic language reference right on the keys in front of you. It also helps to advertise some of the features when it's sat on the shelf of a 1980s high street shop next to its rival. By the time the Electron was released, there was a fairly healthy catalogue of BBC games available, but most wouldn't run straight away on the Electron, either because they used Teletext graphics as a convenient and fast loading screen, or because of memory, timing or sound issues. The Electron only had one channel sound compared to the BBC's three channels plus noise. To be fair, most games did convert with minimal effort, but there wasn't instant perfect compatibility. And of course, once you've waited three minutes to load a game from tape into RAM, that RAM access was slow. Oof! To compare speed, I'm going to look at Elite. I know I always use Elite, but it was developed on the BBC and there are versions specifically for the Electron, BBC and Master. If you're not familiar with Elite, it was a groundbreaking space trading and combat game that used 3D vector graphics, a realistic physics engine, and procedural map generation to create what seemed like an enormous universe to explore. First, the BBC version sets the standard. It's slightly flickery and can slow if there's a lot going on, but it's perfectly playable for the era. However, the Electron version is a bit painful. It clearly renders slower than the Beep. The Master version runs a bit smoother and has more colours in both the main view and the control section. That's the extra memory allowing better graphics mode. Quite a lot of Electron games use lower graphics modes than the BBC equivalent, not because of memory space itself, but to limit the amount of memory operations so they could run fast enough. Most of the standard arcade style games of the time ran well on all three models, but when the hardware was pushed to the limit, the Electron is the one that struggled. That's understandable because back in 1983 it cost less than £200, which was only about £25 more than a ZX Spectrum, and it came with a proper keyboard and felt more like a real computer, and less like a toy. The BBC B was closer to £400, so it should and did offer more.
If you could overcome the fact that you were forced to use one at school, it was a good home computer, but probably a bit more than most casual users wanted. The master was a step up again, having all the best extras available for the BBC Micro, plus a numeric keypad, battery back settings, cartridge slots and huge expandability, but in exchange for nearly £500. I had a BBC Model B for about 7 years and I absolutely loved it, and I'm so pleased I've got another one now. I understand why Acorn made the Electron, but it's just a bit too compromised, and the delay in manufacturing in time for Christmas nearly sank Acorn as a company for good. The Master clearly has the best spec and I love playing with the CoPro, but it all feels a bit serious and complicated. If serious and complicated is your bag though, I absolutely get you would like it, just make sure you have a big desk for it. All three still work well today because you can get video cables for modern displays and if you don't want to load software the traditional way, there are modern alternatives. Some maintenance may be required. All old computers are vulnerable to capacitors drying up, but there are plenty of replacements and refurbs out there. I'm not sure there's going to be a modern retro version of the Beeb anytime soon like we've seen for the Commodore 64, Atari 400 and ZX Spectrum, but I'm happy to preserve and use these three Acorn Originals for the foreseeable future. I've had a lovely three-way. I hope you enjoyed watching it too. Till the next time, cheerio!